Hello. We've put together guidelines for facilitating a synodal consultation using information from many different sources. Being synodal is new to us, to many of us, and so uh, we need some guidance as we go along. And we hope that these guidelines, will, you will find them useful. Before the consultation is held, every effort must be made to ensure that participants' expectations are realistic. This can be done by clarifying the two fundamental questions. First of all, how do you experience the church today? That is to say, in your own lived experience, past and present, how is the church, however you define it, been with you or not? And for the second round, what are your hopes and dreams for the church of the future? In other words, if you could speak to Pope Francis personally, what would you say to him about what you want the church to be for you? It's important that participants realize that the purpose is to form a more sonoral and listening church. And this means we must keep open minds and hearts so that the spirit can work in all of us. The Holy Spirit is a very important part of this process. We should, should not let our personal agendas skew or limit our conversations. And no topics are off limits in this discussion. Participants should be aware that what will be reported is what we discern through the consultation. It's not like a parliamentary procedure where the majority vote wins. Even conflicting con perspectives will be recorded. The facilitator will work with the note taker and should meet with them before the session in order to clarify their roles and the timing and uh, how the whole process, how it will unfold. Timing is really important. It's important for the facilitators and it should not be, a, but it shouldn't be a preoccupation for the participants. So before the session starts, think about the timing, determine it about how long each person has to speak. And then you can track that time bring your watch or set your phone on silent and set a reminder. You might want to write down what time the person started speaking. And if you figure they have seven minutes, keep to that. Uh, don't interrupt them, but when the, their time is almost up, give them a signal to let them know it's almost time to wrap up. You could do a time or have something on a board saying one minute. It's also a good idea to have another signal that you could use to remind um, others not to interrupt, maybe a finger to the lips or a hand up. Um, to explain these to the participants before the session actually starts. The facilitator is the guide for the conversation, not the center of the conversation. Um, when you first arrive, allow a brief period for people to center their thoughts, to settle in and become comfortable. Start, always start with a warm welcome. And remember that your body language is very important. Be engaged, be um, leaning forward to hear, you know, the way that you, you can show that you're interested in what a person is saying. And this should be throughout. Remind participants that their time together was prayerful, reflective, and non judgmental, and try to keep this um, mode present throughout the consultation. Um, at the very beginning, clarify the question for each of the three of the two first rounds, and it might be a good idea to have the question written somewhere on a flip chart 
or otherwise, so that it's clear what you're talking about during a particular round or discussion. That you, you'll have to remind the participants that they're there to listen, to discern, and to dialogue, and not to debate or diatribe. The participants are asked to speak one at a time and to listen with humility and respect. They should be aware that this is a very safe place to speak and that nothing that, they, that is said will be attributed to a particular person who try to capture the essence of what was said, but uh, not, not pin it on someone. And each person should be aware that there are others and everyone has to have sufficient time to share. So although the, you, you don't make time or preoccupation for everybody, uh, no one should hog all the time and they have to be aware that there are other people in the room. Each person has about five, six, seven minutes, whatever you figure would be the best, the amount available. Always keep going back to the question so that people don't get off track. It's a good idea to have um, the person who is speaking hold some sort of an object uh, like a walking stick or a pen or something that could that they can put down when they finish so others know that they have finished and that the next person will use when it's their turn to speak. After a person, each person has finished speaking, acknowledge them and thank them in a neutral manner. Yes, thank you. No, no comment about the uh, what was said, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, that sort of thing. Just a, a simple thank you. And then we should pause in silence between each speaker so that everyone can have time to reflect on what they heard. And um, also it'll give the um, note takers time to um, get caught up on their note taking in between speakers. As a facilitator, you'll be required to uh, sort of control the room. Uh, you must, uh, you might, you'll have to gently inform a speaker when their time is up, as I indicated earlier. Uh, you might have to interrupt a speaker who's gone off topic and tries to debate. You uh, may need to refocus a speaker who's preoccupied with a non-pertinent issue. Bring them always back to what the question is and what the purpose is. And if someone is complaining, it's all negative, everything they say is on a negative tone, um, ask them to reframe their comment as a hope or an aspiration. It's always better to turn it around into something positive or hopeful. And if you have to interrupt a speaker, it helps to acknowledge their contribution by providing, we heard you say this, a brief synthesis, synthesis of what you heard them say, and then thank them for the contribution. <clears throat> and sometimes uh, some people might break down either in speaking or listening, so it's good to have Kleenex work. The third round is different from the other two, which are mainly listening to others answer the two questions. Now we come to the phase, which is discussion and discernment. Discernment is based on the conviction that the God is at work in the world and that we are called to listen to what the spirit suggests to us. That's what we hope is going to happen during this, this encounter. In this third round, participants are asked to share what struck them most from what they heard earlier. 
then after we've heard once, what seems to be resonating in this conversation that we're having? And that can be discussed. And finally, we look for emergent theme, emerging themes that seem to be coming out of this discussion. What is the spirit calling us? Which actions, which hot topics? As a facilitator, you may, I hope not too many, difficult situations might arise. If you have a, a participant who is, has talks about a traumatic experience, you should acknowledge that the trauma is real and deep. You can thank the speaker for their courage in speaking. It isn't easy to do this. You can acknowledge that you hear hurt in their voice and what they're speaking about, that they, you hear the hurt. And, but you have to set a boundary. We can't go deeply into personal stories and we're not equipped to, um, to, to counsel or guide people um, and provide the support that these people need. So, um, but at the same time, we need to hear from those who choose to raise abuses and other things about the church, uh, you could perhaps suggest that they, they can't go deeply into their personal stories. If they need to, they could talk to you after the consultation, or we could look for a resource person to help them afterwards if uh, it looks like we need to do that. And uh, after they, that situation, Take a few moments of silence before moving on to another person. It's time for silence and prayer uh, after each of those, if there are any traumatic experiences. You might encounter an indiv individuals with a particular agenda that they want to flog. Uh, redirect them by asking questions such as, help me understand, or I'm wondering if, ask them what they're getting out of what they're trying to achieve. Uh, you can always remind them about the nature and purpose of the consultation. What, what are we trying to achieve here? What, why are we here? And um, after, again, take a moment of silence, play, try to settle ourselves in a good internal space where we can constructively participate. Some people come and they have no filters. You know what that's like. You probably all experienced it. Take a graduated response in, these case, in this case. Gently interrupt the speaker and remind them to be respectful of other people. And if that doesn't work, tell the speaker gently again the impact they're having on the others in the room. And ask the speaker to change their tone of voice Ask them to speak more softly, to be more aware of the people hearing them. Um, refocus on the question, not the purpose. And finally, suggest that we take a break in time for reflection. Cut off that conversation if you need to. So these um, tips for facilitators, um, it's quite extensive. Uh, I think it's a good idea to be familiar with them, and um, but use your common sense. A lot of it is uh, you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we want to people to speak courageously and for us to listen with open hearts and open minds. And as a facilitator, you can do a lot to help that happen. Thank you.